Now that we've completed our lateral design in Risa 3D, we're ready to send the model into Risa Foundation. So to do this, I'm going to go ahead and use the director tool in the upper right hand corner to migrate into Risa Foundation. What the program's doing now is determining the reactions based on each individual load category. That way it can sort them into their appropriate load combinations once we're in Risa Foundation. So the first thing you'll have when you come into Risa Foundation is the global model settings window. Here we can change things in the solution tab such as the mesh size, um, that's going to have to do with the fact that the program is running an FEA solution on any mat slabs that are modeled in this particular model. We can change the global coefficient of friction. And in the design tab, we can get into things like choosing our design code. Here we're going to use the latest ACI 318 code. We can also choose things like live load reduction op options for columns and uh, if we want to optimize, have the program optimize the footings for us. So in this case, we're pretending that this is a new construction type of scenario. So we're going to go ahead and have that optimized footing box checked there. So once we're okay with these, I'm going to go ahead and press okay. And then we can take a look at the loads that transferred over. So to do this, I can turn my loads on here. We can also look at an isometric view. And this is a good way just to get a good feel for what type of, what size footings we're going to expect based on the loads applied. So here I can toggle between all the different load categories, earthquake loading and wind loading and so on. So I'm going to go ahead and turn those off for now. And then we're going to come back into plan view. The next thing we'll take a look at is the soil definitions. So to do this, I'm going to go to my data entry window and open up the soil definition spreadsheet. Here we can enter uh, general properties for the soil across the model. Um, in this case, we're using a subgrade modulus here and an allowable soil bearing pressure that's going to apply to the entire model. We can also assign depth properties to our soil by simply clicking this red arrow, entering into the spreadsheet, and then pressing enter for each individual layer. So this would apply more in a scenario where we have deep foundations or piles. So you can change the start depth and the unit weight, the skin friction and the unit tip bearing as you go down the soil strata for the program to then give you more accurate results for your deep foundations. So I'm gonna go ahead and just remove these and click out of this spreadsheet. Once we've okayed our soil definitions, I can close out of this spreadsheet and now I'm gonna go ahead and assign some footings. So before we do this, I'm gonna go ahead and use the footing definition spreadsheet and just make sure that these line up with the, uh, basically the design rules that I'd like to have for my footings. So the design rule is referenced in the footing definition spreadsheet here. And what I can do is go and create new ones if I wanted to in the design rules spreadsheet. Here it can change things like the max bending check, the max shear check value. So maybe I like to push my footings to a maximum of 0.9 for the unity check value. And then I'm gonna go into the footing pile cap tab here and we can choose actually the top and the bottom bars that we'd like to use in our footings. I prefer to have number fives on ours, so I'm gonna just choose number five for both of those. So once I'm okay with these design rules, I can come back into my footing definition spreadsheet and I can go to the pedestal tab. In the event that we wanted to add pedestals, we can also change this to a post uh, if we don't have a pedestal. And that's just gonna basically affect the punching shear checks by being able to define the footprint of the base plate that lies on this, uh, any of these footings that occur here. So you'll see these height options get grayed out because it's just gonna be a flat plane for that load to be applied over. Changing this back to pedestal here, we can have uh, and add eccentricities to the pedestal by changing this value. To get a closer look at exactly what each of these values mean here, if I simply press F1 while in this spreadsheet and I scroll down just a tad, we can see that we have this graphic that describes what the EX, EZ, BLX, and BLZ values are. And then we can opt to use either or uh, of these inputs here, noticing that if I choose the BLX, BLZ, that the, these values will now be black and these will be grayed out. So I'm gonna go ahead and just set these back to the default settings because I don't need any eccentricities on my pedestals in this case. In the event that you're up against a property line for some of your footings, however, this is when the BLX or BLZ option would come in handy. This way you could offset the footing as you see in the graphic from that property line by the amount needed. Now let's get into actually drawing our foundations in. 
So to do that, I'm just going to close out of these spreadsheets. That way we have a clearer view of our plan here. And I'm, the first thing I'm going to do is add some grade beams in. So I'm just going to click my grade beam tool and we're going to add some grade beams that are going to be, let's say 24 inches. Let's do 36 inches depth with a 24 inch width. And I like to use concrete 4,000 normal weight. And I'm going to have the ends be fixed in our case. And I'm going to just press apply. Right click out and we've added our first set of grade beams. And I'm just going to add one more set here. And we can also render this to get a cleaner look at what we've drawn. The next thing I'll do is go ahead and add a matte slab under our core walls. So to do that, I'm just going to click our matte slab tool. And I'm going to start off with a 24 inch thick slab and see where that gets us. Again, I'm going to use concrete 4000 normal weight concrete, simply press apply. And then I'm going to click these four corner points here that bound my core walls. So I've added that slab and then I'm going to how to add it to the other core wall. And then I want to go ahead and actually offset these edges. So obviously in a scenario where you're placing a mat slab directly below the concrete core walls, you're actually going to want to offset that edge of slab from the edge of wall just for construction purposes. So to do that, we just click our offset modify slab edges button here. And I'm going to choose an offset distance of two feet. Press apply click my slabs and you see those edges automatically kick out. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a wall footing here between grid lines G and E. So to do that, I'm just going to come over to my wall footings button, click that. And then I want to click this triple dot button here next to that so that we can create a new wall footing. So you have this nice interface here to change the geometry of it. Let's say I want to change that wall thickness to 12 inches and I want to make that wall material, that 4,000 normal weight concrete to match the rest of our project. And then I want to make some, rebar edits. So I'm going to come to the details tab and let's say I want my vertical bars to be number sixes and we'll just see if that works out for us in our design after we solve this model here. And then I'm just going to change the interior cover to one and a half inches to match the exterior. And then we can just press OK. So now when we press apply, all we need to do is click the start point and the end point. And there we have it. We have a wall footing added. So now all that's left to do is go ahead and add pad footings to the rest of these unsupported nodes. So I'm just going to click my pad footing button here, press apply. And the great thing is, is I can just box over these nodes now and we can support those reactions that are remaining. So I just box over the rest of these. And now all of our reactions are fully supported with foundations. So now all that's left to do is to just create some load combinations. That way we can solve this model. So to do that, I'm just going to go into my load combination spreadsheet. You can see here we have two loaded in by default, and I'm just going to use the load combination generator to fill in the rest of those. So I'm going to go ahead and generate some strength load combinations using 2018 IBC. And I want to just make sure my settings are set to X plus Z with eccentricity for my wind loading. And the same thing goes for the seismic loads. So I'm going to press generate and you can see that list there grew substantially. And I just want to do the same thing for ASD. So the strength load combinations are going to apply for our concrete elements. And then the ASD load combinations are going to apply for checking our soil requirements. So I just press generate again with that. Mm -hmm. And now I should be able to solve this model. So just taking a quick look here, we can scroll down and see that all of our strength load combinations at the top, uh, which you can tell by finding that this box here is unchecked for service. And as we scroll down here, we can see that these service boxes start to be checked. So that's how you can tell the delineation of the strength load combinations and the ASD ones. So let's just check where we are in terms of account. So we're at 119 load combinations and we'll go ahead and solve all of these right now simply by pressing our solve button. Now the program is actually using multiple cores. This is a new feature we've added into Risa Foundation. So multi-threaded processing means that their load combinations are being solved in parallel now. So you have um, load combination 41 and solving at the same time as load combination 52, for example. So it really enhances the processing time and, the, and reduces those solution times. After our model is solved, we'll be prompted with a warning log to let us know if there was anything that we should be aware of as the user. So we see here, just scrolling down these really quickly, it looks like we have a lot of soil pressure exceeding allowable soil bearing. 
So scrolling down, just making sure that that's it. Um, we have one retaining wall failing for strength serviceability or re reinforcement checks. So all of these sole pressure checks are just gonna be for nodes that occur within the plate mesh. So it's basically just letting us know that there's a lot of areas under our mat slabs where there's we're exceeding the allowable soil bearing pressure. So we're gonna have to come back and address those at a later time. Just looking at the results that you're gonna get after solving the model, we can take a look at the soil pressure spreadsheet. So now that we see we have the results window here available to us after we've solved the model. So let's go into the soil pressure spreadsheet. We can open that up. And here we can set these max UC values and say, I wanna look at these from max to min. That way we can really hone in on areas where uh, we need to address those exceeded soil bearing pressures. We can also view these on a slab by slab basis. So this is a lot simpler of a format to look at this in. So you can see slab one was actually fine as far as soil pressure goes and slab two is the one where we need to actually address those. So if I wanted to get a visual idea of what these stress contours look like, or these areas of high soil pressures, what I can do is come into my model display options and go to the slabs tab. Here we have an option to display contours and now I can set this to view as output of soil pressure. So if I press apply here, now I can see the soil pressure distribution. And if I take a step back and look at that soil pressure spreadsheet, it looks like the governing load combination was actually load combination one uh, for slab two. So I'll just go back in there in the model display options, and then we can double check that we were looking at it for load combination one. So that makes sense there. So I can click out of this window and if I move my data entry window and I zoom in here, we can see that these areas of reddish colors actually correlate to areas of the highest soil pressure based on our soil pressure legend here in the upper right hand corner. So it's a great way of being able to hone in on the exact areas where you need to sort of maybe tidy things up and bring out this edge more so there's a higher area of bearing. That way we can resolve those exceeded soil pressures. Now that we've taken a look at output for our slabs, we can take a look at detail reports for spread footings. So before we dive into that, you can see that all of these actually adjusted to be to scale based on the actual size required based on the loads applied. So it's a great way to view where areas are gonna uh, begin to overlap or maybe where footings maybe just want to be merged together for the sake of construction. So that's a great feature to have as well. So I'm gonna use my detail report button and simply click on one of these pad footings here. At the top, we have a nice breakdown of sketch for the footing showing us the basic geometry of it. Scrolling down, we can see we have a nice detailing sort of rebar layout for our footings. Coming down further here, we can see there's a nice breakdown of the geometry materials and criteria, the soil bearing checks for every load combination. In this case, it looks like we're actually exceeding in most cases. We also have the footing flexure design for every load combination, footing shear check, concrete bearing check, overturning check, and sliding check. If I wanted to see an updated detail report based on a new geometry, all I would need to do is simply press my redesign button, and I could change that to a larger length and width, for example, and all of these values would automatically update after I press OK. So if I zoom down here, all of these values will have now been updated based on those geometry changes that we just made. And now we can take a quick look at the detail report for a wall footing. So I'll just close out of here, and then all we need to do is click on our wall footing this time. Expanding this, we can see again, we have a great sketch at the top showing us the rebar layout, the geometry of the wall and the footing, the loading diagram, and the load combinations, which can be changed. So that way you can view the applied loads for every load combination. Here we have some more wall properties laid out for us. A wall design force diagram area, as well as the ACI code checks for that wall. A footing design section, where we're checking the flexure of the heel and the toe. The overturning checks, the sliding checks, and the sole bearing checks. So I'll go ahead and close out of this. 
And now we can take a closer look at the slab results. So we're able to view the contours, but basically we want to now leverage the fact that the program can actually tell us the reinforcement we need in the slab based on the forces that it's seeing. So to utilize this, we just simply click our design strip tool and I'm going to go ahead and lay out my vertical bars. So I'm going to click plan vertical and I'm just going to press apply here. And all I need to do is click four points on the slab and the corner points of it and we should be able to see the designed reinforcement. So if I do the same thing and choose horizontal bars this time, the program will sum up the forces in the plate submesh and determine the governing area for this rebar. Zooming in here, for example, our slab design is telling us that we need number fives at six for the top and number eights at 18 at the bottom for the vertical and then another reinforcement design for the horizontal reinforcement. We can also look at detail reports for the design cuts. So I'm going to go ahead and click detail and simply click on one of these design strips and I can expand this and I can see the cut that the program made across the slab perpendicular to the direction of the rebar for sourcing these different shears and moments for which the program is going to check the concrete and the reinforcement. So here we see our ACI 318 code checks, where we see our unity check values, as well as the capacities and the steel requirements for steel ratios. Now, if I wanted to remedy the soil bearing issues that we're having on this slab, what I could do is simply click our modify slab edge tool, and let's see if we kick those out two more feet on all sides, if this addresses the issue. So I can simply press apply and I can kick that out and then I would simply rerun the model and then we would look at the slab pressures again to see if those had exceeded the allowable soil bearing pressures. Risa Foundation also has DXF output options where you can plot things like the plans, the plan views, and the footing details. To access these, simply come to the file drop down menu and click DXF export. Here you can see we have the options of foundation plot plan, reinforcement for slabs, footing details, pedestal details, power cap details and wall footing details. I'm just going to show the foundation plot plan in this case. So I'm going to go ahead and solve the model again since we made that change. And now I'm going to go ahead and do that process again. So DXF export foundation plot plan. Save it to my desktop here. And here you have a lot of options for changing the layer options and the export options here. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep this as default and press OK. And now I'm just going to go ahead and open up AutoCAD and open up that file. So now if I zoom out here, we can see we have our foundation plan from Risa Foundation. If I zoom in, we can see we have footing tags applied to all of our spread footings. We have beam tags to our grade beams. And zooming in on our mat slabs, it's calling out the thickness of the slab here for us. So all of these are tied to a schedule located down below where we can see our top bars, our bottom bars for the footings. And coming over here to the grade beams, we have all the reinforcement laid out for that as well. So it's a great way for scenarios where your contractor's on board and you need some preliminary pricing done to be able to just give, quickly give them a foundation plot plan so that they can get the ball rolling on those pricing schemes. Thank you for viewing this session of the Risa Steel Building Workshop focused on Risa Foundation. When you're ready, please proceed to the next video which will focus on the Risa Revit link.